Schaefer in Chicago, and today I have a guest on our class today. I'm very excited. Chris Bothell has decided to, well, actually he got voluntold to join me for a cooking uh, extravaganza this morning. We're going to do avocado benedict. We are. Avocado benedict. This is my good friend Chris Bothell. Hello. This is his uh, lovely assistant Catherine. Okay. And wife. And wife. And wife. <laughs> And wife, and uh, I'm going to let him primarily take it, but I know I, ha I'll, I have some questions. Chris is a masterful cook, um, self-taught for the most part. Self-evaluated. And self-evaluated, yeah. gives himself an A+. And, uh, every single time. Every single time. No <laughs> and, and we are going to um, get cooking. So Chris, take it away, if you could tell us a little bit about what you're making today. Sure. So I am uh, stealing a recipe from a restaurant in Bellingham called uh, Over Easy, uh, and it's avocado benedict, which is basically an eggs benedict, but you're substituting avocados for the English muffin, which for some folks that are gluten-free is a really nice way to go. That's awesome. We'll just ignore the butter part. Yeah. It's okay. It's grass Hollandaise it's, is a different story, but It's grass-fed okay. butter today, so we're at least good, well-sourced butter. So what we wanted to do was show something that's really easy to make, something that you can put together quickly, and that's easy to feed a lot of people, um, and something you can replicate without too much practice. Fantastic. So, what do we do? Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get uh, our stuff going. So to prep a hollandaise, what we're going to do is use, we're going to use a quarter pound of butter, so we're making a very small amount of hollandaise this time. So a quarter pound of butter, and we're going to use two egg yolks and a little less than a tablespoon. So of here's a, a quarter pound of butter makes a very small amount of hollandaise. <laughs> makes some. <laughs> Measure, measuring is hard. Measuring is hard. So oh. in order to separate yolks from egg whites, people may know this, they may not. I don't know how to do that. What we're going to do is we're just going to go like this. Back and forth. And you're just moving the yolk from one half to the other, but so, so gracefully. <laughs> you can also do it in your hands. And then once you have most of the white separated, just dump the egg yolk in another bowl. And hang on to those whites, because you'll want those for later. So we're just going to do two. I'll show you how to do it in your hands. Just take this half and put it back. Oh my word. I have never seen that. These were washed. These hands were washed this week, so don't worry. <laughs> That's fantastic. And so the, I've the never whites, seen that. The whites will just slip through your fingers like that. Boom, in there. Okay. I'll just do a quick rinse here. Hygiene's important. Uh, people tell me that hollandaise is uh, very tricky to make. Is it? It's only tricky from the labor standpoint. It takes. That's why you have an assistant. If you don't have an assistant, get one. It yeah, makes one. demonstration so much easier. Can I have that towel? <laughs> Sorry. Assistant? Yes. Thank you. So we've got our egg yolks. Now what we need is basically half a tablespoon of lemon juice. So we're just going to take a lemon. And we don't want any seeds, so be careful of that. But just, you can measure this. I don't really measure because, you know, who wants to wash a spoon? <laughs> so we just point. And this does not have to be terribly specific. Uh, you don't want to put too much lemon in there, but um, plus or minus, no big deal. And then, this is where the assistant part comes in. It's oh. super helpful, but we don't need her quite. Okay, okay, because I'll get out of the way. No, you're fine. Okay. So then we're just going to whisk this together. And also the hollandaise is, is egg yolks, a little lemon juice, and melted butter. I, had, I did not know that either. I thought it was much more complicated. That's all it is. Okay. And then it's all about temperature control. So, and there are tons of demo videos of people who are much better cooks than I am online showing variations on holidays and good ways to make it. And blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to take this whisk and give it to my assistant. Excellent. And that's okay. So if you come over here, the camera can show we have this very nice grass-fed butter that has been melted down and this is a this is a quarter pound of butter and you can clarify that if you want to sometimes fat is good right and what we're gonna do is we are going to in a big silver bowl like this we're gonna whisk together 
are egg yolks and butter and lemon juice. And so what we do is get a shallow pan of simmering water. And we can actually move this off here. Let's rearrange this a bit. Hold this forward so you can see better. And we're gonna make a double boiler. And a double boiler is just a bowl sitting above hot water. And you wanna keep the temperature of that water really low. Just barely simmering. Because what we're essentially doing is we're combining the egg yolks and the butter together, but you don't want to cook the egg yolks. Okay. You have to slowly fold in. Uh, and it will thicken up. So this is actually about as hot as we want it. And you can see, if you look in there, it's hardly, but it's just a tiny bit of simmer. Okay. Okay? So then, my assistant is going to take the yolks and pour them in there. And then, we're going to slowly add the butter and keep it and keep everything moving. Just like this. You guys have done this before, I think. Can, can you get a spatula? Maybe? Yep. There's one right here. And this totally takes practice. Um, just don't be scared to fail with it. As long as you keep things moving, you'll be fine. You can see it start to thicken up, but as we add the butter, it'll keep going. So she'll let her keep going with that. Wonderful. What's next on the door? So we do volunteers first to keep that moving, and then what? Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to plate. And we're going to begin to prep what things are going to be. Finally, another one. Excellent. So let's prep our avocado. Little trick to separating avocados. Careful with your hands. Get a sharp knife. Do not use dull knives in the kitchen. It's not a good You're idea. You're going to Okay. Dull knives bad. Wait, can you, there's one thing I wanted to know is how are you supposed to hold a knife when you're cutting? Because I know when a lot of people hold knives wrong. When you're chopping, I like to hold it like this. Okay. I'm not a pro, um, but I tend to hold my knives like this. So you have so much more control. Okay. Right? Holding As opposed knife, to like this. Holding a knife back here by the handle leads to a lot of problems. Okay. You have way less control. You're farther away from the tip. Okay. So, okay. Good bad things tend to happen. Thank you. Knife skills. Knife skills. Okay. Knife skills 101. So, keep your hand wide. Just go, just push it up against the pit in the middle. Okay. You don't have to push hard. All the are soft. Twist. Pull it apart. Take a spoon. And if you take the skin of an avocado and you just kind of work it around a little bit, it starts to separate just a tiny bit oh. from the avocado itself. And then there we go. We're just going to put that on the plate. Okay. That's going to serve as our base. That is awesome. And then to remove the pit, careful with this, just right into the pit. Okay. Little turn. Okay, pit comes awesome. out. Half number two. Perfect. So that forms a perfect little bowl for our for eggs, which we're going to poach in just a moment. Okay, and poaching eggs is another, I think, a lot of people think it's kind of tricky to get it right. No, it's not. It, it, again, same thing, temperature control and okay. timing. Oh. The time on eggs, we'll come back to that in a second, the timing on eggs is what's important. It's three and a half minutes okay. simmering water. Okay, three and a half minutes simmering water. And there's vinegar involved, is there not? There it is. Sometimes what we'll do, we come over here. Do you have a little cold water? Oh, man. There you go. Um, we're going to do this in a pan, shallow pan. Okay. We're also going to take a little bit of white vinegar. Again, measuring is hard. So you just free? Just a little. You free wheel it? A little glug. Okay. Okay. What does the vinegar do? I don't know. Just makes it happen. Um, it <laughs> helps the egg whites stay together a little bit better. Oh, okay. There's probably some scientific explanation that I don't have. Okay. What's the whole question? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So we're going to get our water to a simmer. Okay. We're almost there. And I know that's a tricky corner over there, so hopefully everybody can see okay. We're okay. Yep, good. 
Furiously whisking. Yeah, it's coming back. Yeah, it's coming back. I need to add more letters. You know, a live show where you watch water boil would be really good. <laughs> so this is going to get going. It's almost there. Sorry about the delay. So we got our vinegar in there. Okay, so, and it's hot enough to cook these eggs. We're going to keep an eye on the clock, and we're going to look for three and a half minutes, almost exactly. Okay. And we don't ever want the water to get to a raging boil, so you can see bubbles starting to form. Okay. That's totally fine in terms of temperature. But not temperature. crazy boiling. Not crazy boiling, because it'll make the egg whites go everywhere. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do, crack our egg, go right into our water. There's one. Lovely. Two. And I think when I've done them before, I've had the water way too hot. That is a common mistake. Okay. And then the eggs just fall apart. And yeah. It's a huge mess. Yeah. Right. So you just want to keep it at a very, and keep an eye on them. And right now, the clock's at 15. So we're going to just keep an eye for three minutes okay. from now. And we'll know that they're perfect. Okay. That's right. I, I don't know why it's three minutes. It's it just, just they come out perfect. Okay. It's just a little runny in the middle. Perfect. So, from there, come back over here. Okay. We've got some lovely pico de gallo. Okay. And this is going to go on top of our eggs when they're done cooking. So, avocado poached egg. Yep. Avocado poached egg. Pico de gallo. Pico. And then a little something. <coughs> Excuse me. A little feta magic, which oh, is right here. Feta magic, it always makes everything quite amazing. A little feta cheese, and then hollandaise on the side. Because how much butter does one person need? Right. And it's just <clears throat> to add a little flavor, not to douse the whole thing. Right? Correct. Okay. It's a garnish. It's a garnish. It's a garnish. <laughs> okay, so that's there. Those are all ready to go. And check on our eggs for a second. Our so, hollandaise looks, our assistant is doing a fabulous job. So if you come over here and look at the hollandaise, this is what hollandaise should look like. Okay, and Chris, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna share a little secret here. It fell apart there for a second, didn't it? It did. It fell apart. Sometimes your assistant doesn't waste Because as I fast saw this some things going on over here, some discussion and some it solving broke. problems. It if it, if, if what it happened? Breaks, Tell us what happened. If it gets too hot, it'll sometimes break. Okay. And all you do is it cool it down. Well, which means? Which means the egg yolks and the butter separate from each other. Okay. And so it looks like a clumpy mess. But if you add a little bit of cold water and keep whisking. Nice. And so you can get it back. It's yeah. not over yeah. if that happens. Nope. Just take it off the heat, add really cold water, just a okay. little bit at a time, whisk, and okay. it'll instantly smooth up. I love that. Okay, so talk amongst yourselves for a moment. Okay, I have some questions for you. <clears throat> yes. What got you interested in cooking? Uh, I started cooking when I was 14 at a camp. Oh. I got hired as a cook at a camp for okay. like hundreds of people, and the guy who was the head chef. Uh, had been a chef in restaurants and taught us a lot of really good stuff. Oh, that is fantastic. Yeah. And what are some of your other favorite things to cook? What do you like to do? Uh, I love to grill. <coughs> grill. Yeah, Chris did a cedar plank salmon recipe. It's on the blog if you want to check that out, wellfitandfed.com, and you can just put a salmon in. And I think right now it's one of the only salmon recipes on there. Do you, is uh, cedar plank salmon still one of your favorite things to cook on the grill? For sure. Okay. Um, we're, we live in the Northwest, so we have access to so much good protein, so much good fish, um, grass-fed meat, awesome. you know, free-range chicken. There's no end to the supply of great protein. Okay. So we do a lot of cooking by grill, a lot of indirect heat uh, on charcoal, Okay. Uh, stuff like that. So we've got the cedar plank salmon recipe. If I were to say, hey, what would be the next grill recipe you do on the blog, what, what would be your next idea? Ooh. Uh, I would probably do spatchcock chicken. Oh. And spatchcock chicken is basically you're taking the backbone and the rib cage out of a chicken and you're laying it open flat. It's like roasting a chicken, but it's flat on the barbecue. <laughs> Just chicken. like that. Yeah. I also call it tuxedo chicken sometimes because you can actually stitch it back together. So you take the entire backbone structure out of it and then you fold it back together and you sew it up and it looks like he's wearing a little suit jacket. Oh my gosh. How's our time? We're good. Okay. We're about 30 seconds away. Okay, 30 seconds. I love it. Do you need anything to, how do you get those out of there? We're going to use a slotted spoon. A slotted spoon. Slotted spoon. That our other assistant, who's behind, behind the, the camera, camera, 
ran out and bought this morning. <laughs> so. Do you need a plate or anything like? Yes, our plate with the avocados right there would be perfect. We're gonna put them right on there. Yep. Fantastic. Shall I come in with those? It's not quite time yet. Okay, our avocados aren't we're absolutely. Like, we're like thirty seconds away. Gorgeous. So that's okay. We're gonna cover them with an egg. That's all right. Just pan. Sometimes if you do them in a shallow pan, you want to be careful they didn't stick to the bottom. So just really gingerly kind of move them around. Move them around. Yeah. But these look like they're going to be just about perfect. Okay, that's awesome. Okay. So the slot serves to get rid of any of the extra liquid. Right. We just want to get rid of the water. Okay. It's there. And then we're just going to drop that. Right onto... Nice. Right onto... The... That's gorgeous. Right onto the platform. Number two. Tidy. Okay, that is so cool. We're tidy. Okay, so then, excuse me, come back over here. Okay. We're going to take an avocado covered spoon. Excellent. Grab some pico. And we're just going to drop it right on top. Okay, that is looking beautiful. It is. And this breakfast, I like this breakfast a lot because it's super light. Um, you know, it's it's not going to leave you feeling heavy or full. Yeah. And you're not, <clears throat> like we said, you're not using that, you know, a lot of Benedicts, you're covered in hollandaise. And right. You're suggesting, no, just use it as a little thing on the side. Yeah, and even the feta. You don't need a lot of feta. Feta okay. has a lot of salt in it. That is so beautiful. That. Do that. And then, our system over here. It's done a lovely job. Okay. Oh, right here. So now, just a little on the side there. A little on the side. Okay. So we used it. We did a quarter pound of butter. A lot of hollandaise recipes call for a full pound. Let's get which is right there. So you're forgetting one thing. Oh, do we have more? We have bacon. <gasps> well, we, of course, nothing is complete with bacon. We, Where do you want to put it on we that? We pre cooked plate? some bacon. We did. And just a little something for your morning. Oh, that is so gorgeous. Chris, oh my goodness, thank you so, so much. That is awesome. And uh, Thanks to our I'm too. quite sure we will be having Chris back to do another cooking lesson. This took us no time at all, and look at this. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, everybody. And um, make sure you sign up on Well Fit and Fed uh, to get this blog post, because I'm going to take some pictures of this and write up the recipe for you. And we'll get that out. And we will see you next time. Okay, thank you so much.